morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. And welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Now, in case, and for those of y'all who are wondering why I started the program this way, because I just felt compelled to do this because I'm really, really sick and tired of hearing uh, that. Now, some of y'all are not gonna like this conversation, so I'm gonna give you a fair warning. And it might make you uncomfortable, but I wanna hear it. I'm here for a few minutes, I believe, to talk about uh, Farrakhan and Malcolm X and why people assume or say that he's responsible for um, Malcolm X's death. In spite of what has happened, in spite of all the information that's out there, uh, people still want to have that conversation and make Farrakhan responsible. Because I've heard all kinds of things. I've also heard that if you're still doing something and you're still alive, and if you've gone against this government, then you must be paid by the government. I've heard a lot of y'all say that. So bear with me while I try to break some of this down because I was alive then and I, and I know both men and remember both men very well. I don't remember Malcolm as I should be, um, because I was... Uh, Let's see. It was like five years old. So all I remember is a tall guy, tall man. And just to know that my father, again, went, ran the Muslim Mosque Incorporated here in Milwaukee. So I talk about the confusion a lot as a child or where my place was in religion and things of that nature. But nothing bothers me more than the confidence that a lot of people have in spewing out that Farrakhan killed Malcolm X. And I'm not ever going to co-sign that. I'm never ever going to allow anybody to come around me talking like that. And I want you to know that I love both men extremely. And that's why I put up both pictures in the beginning. Because this is very important because it divides our country. I mean, and it divides us as a people, especially, right? And y'all have to remember that the devil always seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And most of y'all haven't bear witness enough to even believe it yet. Everywhere he's gone, he's caused division and separation and Hey, you're fat. I'm skinny. Let's make this a problem. Hey, you're dark skin. I'm light skin. Look at this. Let's make it a problem. These dynamics were created by a demonic energy. And when you don't take that all the way through, you know, but you hold people accountable and responsible for their um, roles and things. But you have to get clear about who the, your open enemy is. And I think that it's really getting to the point now where I just had to say something. I, I usually don't. And so let me say this first and foremost. Um, I thought, no, before I do that, I want to read an article that was done. Um, Michael Hernandez is his article. And uh, Eliasa is the one who granted him the interview. Eliasa is, or Eliasa is Malcolm's third daughter. Because it's Atala, Kubella, yeah. And um, Eliasa. So, Malcolm X's daughter said in remarks published 
that she and her family are grateful that Manhattan's district attorney is reviewing her father's case. I think that I speak on behalf of my family in this case when I say that I'm grateful that Cyrus Vance, Manhattan district attorney, is considering to open this case and investigate who really killed our father. Eliasa Shabazz, one of Malcolm Six's daughters, said during the interview with Democracy Now! I think I speak truly on behalf of millions of supporters and followers in this country and around the world when I say we not only want to know who killed him, but why was he killed? Okay. Now, she wouldn't be saying that if she had an affirmative or just felt that Farrakhan was the culprit. She wasn't raised like that. Okay, and I know she wasn't. Okay, so I because I wasn't raised that that. So my point is she would say what she meant and she would mean what she said. Um, the questions have been brought to light surrounding this killing and the conviction of two of the three men tied to the Nation of Islam for the murder. And that's why everybody continues to say Farrakhan did it. However, let's keep going. Following the release of Who Killed Malcolm, that documentary, uh, you know, new questions are coming up and there's a newfound interest. Thomas Johnson, Norman Butler, and Talmadge Hare uh, were found guilty and convicted of two of the th and two uh, of the three men tied to the Nation of Islam for the murder. Following the release of Who Killed This Documentary on in this documentary on Netflix. Thomas, um, of course, they were found guilty. But Hayer has maintained that while he was involved in the crime, neither Johnson nor Butler took part, and they are they're innocent. Um, the Netflix documentary explores the possibility that Hayer was assisted by other men, including William Bradley, a Nation of Islam member from Newark, New Jersey. I'm sorry, Nurk. <laughs> Bradley, who is also known as Al Mustafa Shabazz, was an infamous criminal who wore the assassination of Malcolm X as a badge of honor. Uh, Abdur Rahman Muhammad, a historian who took part in the Netflix series, said in the now interview, that's what Sister Betty meant when she said, yeah. He wore it like they wore it like a badge of honor. I'm not going to sit here and think and know that Betty Shabazz, while she was alive, Lord ancestors speak, that she was, was speaking that Farrakhan was admitting that he did that. And that's what he wore as a badge of honor. No, she was speaking that around the time that that happened, the, the people that wanted Malcolm gone was you know, was like, yeah, now we shut them down. And it wasn't just those guys that were involved. That was certain in the energies that was the Nation of Islam at the time that wanted Malcolm gone. Okay? I just remember being sitting in church. My father coming, grabbing us out of there. I think I've told this story millions and millions of times where he was just off the rail. And I was traumatized because he said, it killed Malcolm. It killed Malcolm. And we had to leave the church. Um, my mother and my little brother was a baby, and I'm and like I said, I must have been about four or five. I was about four, right? It's going to be five, and um, I was the same age, Kubilla, when when he died. So I'm I'm the person that's. The, that that's who who I kind of identify with because I want to talk about later her being accused of trying to set up the assassination of Malcolm, you know all that crazy. I mean of a uh, Farrakhan. But let me stick right here. Um. Now.
This was his street cred, that he was the one who took out Malcolm. And he would remind you of that, Muhammad said. Malcolm's daughter added, if he was not arrested, then obviously someone protected him. Someone protected him from going to jail and someone protected him so much so that he felt invincible as to continue to live in broad daylight, knowing that he had pulled the trigger and admittedly so on my father, she said. Now, Bradley did die in that uh, documentary, of course, in 2018. Uh, and I agree with that a thousand percent. We have too much self-hatred for that. That's that that kind of protection can only be done um, by police. That's who we scared of. So he must have had some real, real serious protection for him to feel that he could walk amongst his community and not feel like a hair on his head would be harmed. And he wore like a badge of honor that he killed Malcolm. As many people love that was in love with Malcolm. Uh, no way. Let me just help you out with that. Someone did protect him from going to jail. Yes, they did. Um, of course, okay, the documentary which follows up on criticism over whether Malcolm's case was handled, it, well, the way it was handled, prompted district attorney's side bands to launch a preliminary review of Malcolm's case. No, that's that's what is being you know being done. Additional steps may be taken depending on what the review discovers, according to multiple reports. Now, my thing is, it's not going to uh, do anything but to tell you that William Butler, a la uh, Shabazz, not any related to Malcolm, Mufasa Shabazz had some kind of agreement with the police department, allegedly. Okay? Because in an article done by Rich Shapiro uh, in the New York Crime, he says Malcolm X alleged assassinated is hiding in plain sight right here in New York, in Newark, 50 years after a civil rights leader was killed. Got him with a post office box a uh, package going to the post office or coming from the post office. Life is good for El Mufasa Shabazz. The 76-year-old ex-con lives in a two, uh, gated two-story home in one of the nicest neighborhoods in Newark. See, this is the kind of rewards you get from quote-unquote. Who? Y'all think the nation was able to promise him and put him in a gated community and let him drive a Benz Mercedes class east of then. He's married to one of the city's most prominent civic leaders. But Shabazz has even better reason to be counting his blessings. He allegedly got away with one of the most one of the most notorious murders of the 20th century. The burly Muslim with the white beard was the chief assassin in the slaying of Malcolm X. According to the author of the Pulitzer Prize winning biography of the slain um, civil rights leader, in his book, Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention, Columbia University professor Manning Marable identifies Shabazz as firing the first and fatal shots at the former Nation of Islam leader. Okay, Multiple sources have also told the Daily News that Shabazz's role in the killing has been an open secret in Newark for years. Okay? Here's a man who's walking the streets of Newark with impunity, a Teflon Don type, and nobody's doing anything about it, said Abdul Rahman Muhammad, a historian and a writer who was the first to publicly identify Shabazz as the trigger man. It's an affront to a justice and an affront to the legacy of Malcolm. Shabazz reached outside his home last week, initially clammed up when confronted by the Daily Reporter. I don't have no comment. You can call my lawyer. 
pressed further, Shabazz defended himself. It's an accusation, he said. They never spoke to me. They never accused me of something I didn't do. The mystery surrounding Malcolm's assassination has dogged scholars for decades and inspired endless conspiracy theories. Yeah, like one that uh, 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 Farrakhan did. And let me tell y'all something about uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan, who used to be Minister Louis X. When I knew, I knew Farrakhan before he got his name changed. Okay, I knew him as Louis X. Um, and one thing I can say about him, and he was in Boston, I believe, is where he was at. And then he took over the mosque in New York. But to make a long story short, my I just knew these people because my father had drugged me through this stuff. These are the things I'm talking about that kids are like in hostage situations. Okay. However, I do remember um, this person that um, I'm sorry, you guys. You know the monsters. I got a pregnant monster here. And you know they're my priority. So she had to go to the bathroom. So I kind of like lost my train of thought and I can't because this is too important of a article that I'm doing. So just bear with me a second. Because when Farrakhan says he sets up an environment or he's helped set up an environment um, that allowed him to be killed, meaning Malcolm, um, they all did at that time. Because I, even though I can't remember the tangibles, of course, yes, I was too young. But I just remember, I know what a lot of buzz looks like. And it was a lot of buzz going on around the nation, around my parents. My parents, and it was a mess. Some people didn't speak to each other anymore. I do remember that. I remember being friends with the Waleeds. And my father began, like I said, represented Malcolm in Muslim Mosque, Inc. And there was a lot of people that were our friends that wasn't our friends anymore. Girls that I grew up with. Anyway, make a long story short, I don't want to go back to that. Um, these guys were so young. And the reason why I always say, do you want those of us who are older, and I'm going to say past 50, can you really take the wisdom that you have now and say that what you said in your 20s and early 30s, you were as responsible? I didn't say if you pulled the trigger. I'm saying the zealousness of a 20-year-old or of a young person is nothing when wisdom begin to set in, like it should if you're evolving correctly, right? So I'm saying that to say, I'm not making excuses for y'all when you say, oh, that's just an excuse. Listen, if you guys can't have it both ways, like you always do, you say if anybody is spared and they're still alive today, then they must not have really been down for the people. What do you mean? Look at Mumia Abu-Jamal. He's still alive. Right? Why can't they just kill him? When you had Geronimo Pratt, if it wasn't for uh, uh, Johnny Cochran, he, he still would be a political prisoner. So don't say that. Y'all just say stuff that's right off crazy that you can't you, you spin your wheels in the dirt. Okay? Farrakhan ain't got got because he haven't done anything. You don't go to jail for setting up an environment. A lot of y'all said some bad things with y'all mouths who it might have created the atmosphere for somebody else to go do something. Some of y'all done got somebody keep people beat up because of words you said. Now put that on to when you were a teenager and when you're younger or in your twenties. And 30, you, 
Come on, the energy is totally different. So if you want to say Farrakhan is guilty of that, yes, he is 110% as a young man saying things against Farrakhan because he was trying to call himself protecting Elijah Muhammad, which was all stupid, in my opinion. And I don't got no, no, no dog in this fight. I am not a member of the church. I am not a member of the nation of Islam. I love the nation of Islam. I'm, however, I am no longer a member. Okay, so with that being said, I'm not going. But I'm not going to allow anybody to come on my page or go somewhere and crap on Farrakhan, and I don't have a response. And there's a lot of y'all that's probably uh, white is going to say, "What you like Farrakhan? Oh my God, I'm going to get off your page." And that's fine because when you know what leadership looks like, and when you don't go for those sign back bite. Bites like Donald Trump one or two times we agree with each other. Fake news. And you listen to a person in their totality and not the sound bites and the clips that they do. Then you make an assessment. It's a reason why when white folks really sit down and listen to him when they turn red. But when they can swallow the pill. A lot of them say that's leadership. Donald Trump is not leadership. <laughs> Trust you me. And whether you are Muslim or not. Donald Trump is not leadership. That is not what it is. Leadership starts with truth. Okay? Now, I might not agree with everything, or, uh, if it, but it starts with a basic foundation of truth. I mean, my God. So, if you can't even do that, then you already know that you're not a good candidate for a leadership position. You're a troll. You are, you're, you're a demagogue. Okay? So without, uh, um, you know, saying anything other than that has got to be the most craziest thing I've heard. If the, gov if, if the government wanted Farrakhan dead, he would have been dead. I mean, unless he was working as an agent. Listen, I'm, you know, all that kind of stuff in the Church of Scientology and all that where, where he's going and all that. It's got nothing to do with the work that man has put in. Like I said, I'm no longer a member of the Nation of Islam. So that's not what I'm defending here. I'm defending y'all coming on my page telling me that Farrakhan killed Malcolm. And I'm like, that is the most ignorant thing I've ever heard in my life. And the reason why I put up the picture of Farrakhan is because I was able to pray with him the last time I saw him. And because of the trauma that a lot of us that were born in the 60s, that remember that struggle. We don't remember it so vivid. Like, like it's a blur. Like Elias has said, it's a blur. But you remember your parents crying, or you remember your parents being upset, or you remember those things. You know, like I told you, I never seen my mom cry. So, so my, my, my point being, when somebody prays with you because they know that you've been traumatized by the actions of not them per se, but by them and everybody else, just the whole environment that you pray and you ask for forgiveness. Because if that's the case, you guys, I look at all these young brothers out here right now that's even beefing. Oh, look, Tupac and Biggie. And I'm sure if they had a chance to do it again, those they would be older men. They'd be in their 40s now. You think the same shit that would make them anger them in their 40s going on 50 would be the same thing that they beefing about in their 20s? Pac didn't get a chance to grow into the man he was to become. And y'all got to understand that so we can move forward. And if, listen, and while I'm not a member of the Nation of Islam, I do not want you coming on my page and doing that to Farrakhan because I will block you. I will block you. Yes, I will. Because first of all, none of y'all put in no work. None of y'all ain't put y'all life on the line at all for nothing and nobody. You just running your mouth. It's like what James Brown said, you're talking loud and saying nothing. And what? Saying nothing. And what you doing? You are not in a position to even hold his jock strap. I know men. I've seen men who have put their lives on the line. OK, it doesn't matter whether it was for Elijah Muhammad, whether it was for Louis Farrakhan, whether it was for Malcolm X. Those were men that stood for something. I didn't see them all out here selling dope. 
I didn't all see them all out there robbing and raping in the community. And as far as I'm concerned, I've seen men being picked up and resurrected by the teachings that they never heard before. So just like Tamika Mallory, you will never get me to uh, shit on Farrakhan because I see his works. See, show me your works. Show me what you produced. Okay? Because, again, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. All right? So now, show me your, show me your fruit. There's a lot of people that was a mem member of the Nation of Islam that uh, left. Charles Muhammad or uh, 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 um, who started the five percenters? Uh, Clarence X or any. These were men. And you can see they works can they're carry, carrying on. When you see the Erica Badu or you see who you can see. They were, the word is not coming back void. The mathematics is there on point. And it all came from Elijah Muhammad. So I'm not going to let you uh, crap on him. Elijah Muhammad, at the end of the day, was still a man. A black man raised in Georgia. <laughs> Who was not infallible. Grow up, people. Grow up, grow up, grow up, people. 